All right, first off, welcome back to Jackknife TV. If you can, please go over there and smash the subscribe button and hammer down the like button for me. Helps the channel out, helps it grow. Yeah, especially since I'm not putting much content out right now. To be honest, I just I just don't feel like it. All right. I will I will say this as of right now because I already know I want to get it. Um right now I am a disheveled mess. All right. The loads I am getting are totally screwed up. Uh, I just did a uh, run down to Temperanceville from uh, Paws Town. Had to pick up, well, had to drop an empty in Temperanceville. If you know where Temperanceville is, you know it's a tiny little peninsula out in the middle of nowhere, uh, Virginia. And then cross back through Baltimore and everything to deliver here in Greencastle, Pennsylvania for, uh, what the hell is this, food line. And I will tell you what, this food line treats drivers like total dog shit all right and i'm not even gonna freaking you know try to ice it out or anything uh just just the way they treat treat you it, it's it's like uh being corralled uh like corralled into i don't know uh we'll, we'll say a uh livestock trailer or whatnot and uh yeah so i don't know i'm a little agitated but then again i i want to kind of want to put this out here now because even though I had a shitty night, didn't get much sleep, just spent the spent the day sleeping here in the uh, in the truck um, for about I don't know about six or seven hours. I don't know. You get phone calls and everything else throughout the day. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm just gonna tell you like like it is right now. Trucking trucking is not fun right now. Uh, it's it's you know, for I would say at least eighty percent of us. It's not fun. I know there's guys that are doing fine right now. All right. And for the ones that watch this that are doing fine, I, I'm not trying to be a, a, a dickhead right now, but, you know, just keep your mouth shut and guard everything that you're doing like like it's your life, all right? Don't come on here and start blabbing about where you are and what you're doing and who you're hauling for. Just keep your mouth shut. Be happy that you're doing all right and uh, that things are going good for you because I'll have somebody come on here and talk about, you know, don't listen to this fool. I'm doing great. Um, look at him. I don't know. It freaking didn't shave or something, or his freaking eye or something. I don't know. I like. I, I'm so tired of people anymore. I can see once you get out here and you, you, uh, you expand. All right, up over into what? Oh, we're we're sitting over fourteen thousand subscribers. You start getting losers that have nothing else better to do but come on here and troll people. All right, and. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't want to make this conversation about that. I'm just putting it out there that uh, that you know you're gonna probably see in the comments people saying shit and talking shit about me, and I just I don't even I don't even bother leaving it anymore. I just delete it. So if you're gonna do it, don't even waste your time, pal. Uh, just move along, all right? Because I'm gonna delete the comments, even though I said I would never do something like that, and I kind of find it petty. It's gotten so out of control. I don't even care anymore. Uh, so now I got that out of the way, uh, trying to justify my, I don't know, my knowledge and I'm going to try to dish, dish out here. Uh, if you're getting into trucking right now, don't do it. Don't do it. Unless you're being a company driver and you did some really good research on the company you're getting into. Because I don't care what BS a recruiter spills out about how much you're going to make and our drivers are averaging this. You're not going to make that right now. All right. If you're sitting here right now looking to get your CDL and, you know, jump on in the trucking and you're going to make more money than you're making now, stay where you're at. If you're in retail or whatnot, your job is probably safer than than uh, truck drivers right now. I'll, I'll put it that that way. We are on the front line. All right. We are on the front line of the economy. So when the economy takes a shit, we're going to be the first one to see it. And guess what, guys? We're seeing it. I don't care what your politics are. If you are so cloud it with uh i don't know picking sides or whatnot if your mind is so clouded and you can't see it i, I don't know what to tell you uh may maybe you got enough money that it doesn't bother you you could care less about spending an extra couple hundred dollars you know grocery shopping or or, or doing not but for the majority of everyone else about like 75 percent of americans are living paycheck to paycheck um uh, let's see last month I think they said uh, about 45% of businesses weren't able to pay their rent. So, you know, the economy is hurting. 
All right, I don't care what CNN, I don't care what Fox News or any any of them. Whatever, like I said, whatever affiliation you are politically, it doesn't freaking matter. Uh, all that matters is whether or not the money's coming into your pocket and you're able to support your family at the end of the day. And uh, that's 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 becoming a problem right now. All right. Um, so, like I said, if you're co coming into trucking and you think you're going to start making thousands of dollars a week, you know, $2,000 checks and stuff, unless you're in something specialized where they're doing government work or they're doing super duper heavy haul and stuff, I, I don't know why whenever I come on here and I, I talk like, you know, talk about stuff like this, there's always people that are like, oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And then they talk about what they're doing and it's. It's not the gen. It's you know. It's not nothing that generally everyone does. It's always something specialized, uh, cattle hauling, things like that. And I don't know why people can't get it through their head that they're doing something that nobody else does. All right. And uh, you know, eventually, if things get bad enough, it's going to catch up to you too. All right. I wouldn't go out there and start talking about what you're doing. That's for sure. Um, because I will tell you what, if you're in flatbed right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because when shit hit the fan back in 2020, what, around April, I guess, everybody started getting rid of their swing doors and moving over to flatbed. And, uh, well, flatbed is what flatbed is right now. $1.70 a mile for tarp loads going, I don't know, a thousand miles and stuff like that. Um, it's, you know, it's just not, it's just not the way it was. All right. Now, I know there's some guys that are still grossing $8,000 a week, but... Feel happy, you know, be happy that you are gross in that. All right. Don't come on here and start telling everybody everything's fine because it's not. It's not. Um, I'm, let's see, I, I'm also, I run ded dedicated for Tyson. All right. And like an idiot, I figured I would buy a new truck because I was tired of everything I ever bought breaking down or the engine blowing up, mostly Cummins products. So I don't know. Uh, I'm not a too big Cummins fan. I'll tell you that right now anymore. So I know you can have your opinion on torque and everything else like that, but you know, um, I'll just put that right out the bat. Um, but if, uh, you know, if you went out and bought a new truck, you're SOL right now. Uh, unless you have a dedicated customer, dedicated freight, and you're, you're actively your whole entire, uh, goal is to pay that truck off as fast as you can. All right. Uh, <laughs> cause right now I'm, I don't know how I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to stop making pay. I was making extra payments to this truck. I'm going to stop doing that. I can't afford to do it anymore. Uh, I'm getting dispatched shitty loads, uh, loads that I'm sitting, uh, two days on to go like, like, uh, to, for instance, tomorrow I have a delivery at 6 AM then 45 miles away. The next day I have a delivery at the Costco in, uh, Monroe and, uh, I'm not getting paid layover or anything. I'm, I'm stuck out there 140, 120 ish miles away from my house. I mean, I could drive back and waste the fuel back and forth, back and forth and the tolls, but you know, I'm not, even though my last settlement was good I'm not, I'm not doing that. All right. It's, it's, it's starting to get ridiculous. I'll get two good settlements and then the rest of the rest of the month is shit. Um, and it's, it's not, it's not necessarily I'm getting beat up on. All right. I'm talking to other guys and it's just things are slow. Things are slow here. People are not, uh, I've talked to sales guys. All right. Sales guys. And, uh, things are slow. You know, sometimes when I put in these claims, I have to talk to some, sometimes I'll get the claims office. Sometimes I'll get a sales guy and it's just, uh, nobody's buying meat. All right. It's expensive. <laughs> Uh, put it that way there. And if they are buying meat, they're buying the cheapest meat they can find. And it probably ain't Tyson or Purdue or what it's probably where, you know, maybe a local farmer's market or whatnot. Am I mad about that? Not necessarily, but you can see where the economy is going when you start looking at things like that. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. If you're, you're coming in a truck and don't, don't expect, don't expect, you know, the $2,000 weeks anymore. Don't expect the $1,500 week. You know, be happy that you're making twelve hundred bucks, and that you're mostly working. Or if you're like, a, if you're doing a local gig, make sure you know. Be happy you're making those fourteen hundred dollars a week, uh, running a local. Uh, as for getting your authority, don't get your authority right now. Don't I like? I can't say this enough. I am getting emails from brokerages 
they're putting out you know new requirements and stuff uh, you're talking about three to six months three to six months to work with 90 percent of the brokers and the ones that aren't requiring that you, you don't know if you're going to get paid all right some of the most of them aren't factorable it's just it's a crapshoot you're you're taking you're taking a huge chance and right now is not the time to be taking a chance i mean maybe if you have like a 900 dollars month truck payment like i once did you could maybe take those chances but you know even even right now if i okay right now if i had a 900 dollars truck uh, a month truck payment um it would take a a a, a good weight off my shoulders would i still be worried yeah yeah because things are getting that hairy all right with the economy um i don't know i i don't to be honest i don't know if the election is going to help at all i don't really think it is to be honest i think to dig dig our way out of the hole that we're in right now is going to take at least a year or two it's just going to be just like 2008 when when it uh you know when the financial crisis happened it's not going to be fixed within a year or two it's probably going to take this is going to be a five-year hiatus of ridiculous crap all right i i can't even explain it because it's going to be uh it's going to be hard on a lot of people all right and there's going to be a lot of people who are going to lose their houses they're going to lose their cars they're going to probably you know um, families are going to fall apart it's going to be uh another crisis all right and we're we're just getting into it it's just being sugarcoated right now, so nobody really knows what's going on. Um, because I've I've talked to other carriers, I've tried to maybe lease on to a different carrier, and the reason I'm still here, it, it just seems like the safest place to be. It, it just seems like the safest place to be. I can't afford to take the risk to move to a different carrier, uh, and definitely not get my authority. And see if the glass is greener on the other side, because if it isn't, if it isn't super green, you're you're SOL. It doesn't take long for the bills to back up when you got a what a, like a four thousand dollar month truck payment. All right, that was my fault. I got into this. I was making money hand over fist the first couple months uh, with the older truck. Uh, well, first month or so. And then even when I got the new truck, it was doing good. I was having eight thousand dollar settlements and stuff, um, gross settlements. All right, eight nine, and uh, they're gone. They're gone. My last settlement was pretty decent. I'm not gonna say what it was because I'll probably get shit for it. But still, with the uh, you know, for most guys that might be good enough for me, I have a lot of baggage. All right. When you when you had a company that had employed two drivers and you were working two and you failed and um, through COVID, you have a lot of baggage, a lot of things to make up, things that you didn't pay, um, credit card debt and things like that. That I'm slowly trying to dig my way out of the hole. All right. So, like I said, uh, just uh, learn from my failures. All right. Don't don't take a huge leap right now. It's not a good idea and it's not that it's not that this isn't the this isn't the market where you say oh well you know you start out you know if you can make it when it's really bad you can make it anytime um, this is different these brokerages are actively trying to stop new carriers from entering the market because things are so bad uh, I think I think it may be even the uh, the rates and pricing are hurting some of these brokers because shippers are shippers are like no we can get away with moving it for a dollar fifty mile. We can get away moving it for a dollar fifty mile. You take your cut, and uh, yeah, it is what it is. And the brokers are having a hard time moving loads. All right, they're moving them. Somebody's taking them, but they don't. They don't like haggling. They don't like doing that, for the most part. I mean, they like making their money, but they don't like, you know, having loads sit days on, uh, wondering if they're going to be able to move it because. The shippers, for some reason, thinks that they can move it at rock bottom prices, and that just goes to show you that it's not 100% the brokers right now. All right, I'm sure there are some brokers that are still taking a decent cut, and they're driving the rates even lower. Like I'm talking about, like dollar twenty a mile loads and things like that. But it just, uh, you know, it's the economy. It's the economy right now. All you have to do is look at the first quarter uh, projections of like the larger mega carriers. You can see, you see these larger mega carriers aren't stupid, right? They've been in business a long time. They're making millions, and they're losing. They're losing money. They've lost money in the first quarter. 
uh, what was it? Swift. Uh, I forget who else came out uh, like uh, off the top of my head. I mean, you can look it up. You can look up first quarter of some mega carriers and you can see that they're losing money. And you can also just go on YouTube and look around. You can see all the drivers that are angry at Prime and stuff that are saying that, you know, loads are getting sparse. Things are happening. Uh, you can look at Wildbeard. He's on the same account that I'm on. Uh, he's not necessarily complaining, but he is saying that, you know, things aren't, you know, they're not moving like as good as they were. Uh, it's just, uh, just doesn't look good, guys. Doesn't look good. I mean... You can take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. You don't have to listen to me because technically I'm probably, I don't know, I'm I'm a couple weeks away from, from failing. You know, if the truck decided to break down for a few weeks or whatnot, I mean, I'm probably, to be honest, me personally, like inside the way I feel right now, I'm almost done with trucking. All right, and I've done this for 10 plus years and I've watched, you know, seen shit go, you know, good, bad, good, bad. And I mean, all right, I can understand a little bit of downturn. All right, I know that's how the market fluctuates, but when we're going from good to bankruptcy, good to bankruptcy, it, why bother? Why why would you want to do this? Why would you want to, uh, you know, make money to watch it all disappear the next year or, or, or the year after and then deal with all the FMCSA BS and everything else like that? Like I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm fed up with trucking as a business that uh, I've looked. I'm hell. I'm looking into maybe opening a power washing business. I, do I know anything really about power washing? No. I just know that a lot of trailers need washed out work in my area. You know, like that's that's how much I'm I'm done with trucking. You know, I'm thinking about just getting out of it altogether, letting the truck get repossessed, um, or just driving over to uh, Pack Car Financial and dropping off at one of their lots. And uh, getting out of this game because this is, uh, you know, this this is getting ridiculous. Unless you have some huge, huge, you know, money tiled up into this, and you got something going, you got multiple trucks, and you got customers that are going to stand by you and not just flake, uh, you know, take the next cheapest bid like that. It's just, it's just not worth it. Uh, there's too many trucks out here, and the the economy's shrinking. All right, so that's that's my little rant for right now, my angry rant or whatnot, or my fed up rant. So if you like the content I'm putting out, you like the realism, you like the no BS, uh, sugar coated, you know, or unsugar coated, I should say, uh, rant here. Uh, please subscribe, go over and smash the like button, and uh, yeah, jackknife out.